my name is Roger Guy, and I'm a visual effects supervisor at Industrial Light and Magic. And uh, I've worked there for quite a number of years, probably close to 17 or something like that, 17, 18 years. Um, and I started there um, as a technical director, working on movies, you know, lighting shots and doing effects animation. Um, and that, and worked my way up through, you know, being a CG supervisor or digital supervisor. and slowly you know you become a co-supervisor and eventually they, they let you let you let you loose on your own movie you know so um, and I've been uh, you know doing visual effects supervision for them for a number of years I, I, I'm not even sure how many but it's been a while I mean that the, the, the I mean the thing that you can't you can't ignore is that every project is probably for me anyway if you if you do the whole movie you're literally one of the first people on the movie and one of the last to leave you can guarantee that you're certainly one of the literally one of the last five or half dozen people to leave the movie so it's making for the most part a year and a half commitment to something so the first thing I do I'm always thinking do I want to be doing this for a year and a half or two years of your life I mean it's, it's a tremendous commitment and people sort of forget about that and actually at the end of the day you're working with people, your everyday experience is the director and the, the team that you're working with, and that's a really important part of it. So are you being ins going to be inspired by the people? Do you like their work? Um, you know, there's certain things you, can't, you don't have control over, but um, I, I really want to spend my time and a lot of long days with people that I'm truly inspired by, and I think that's a really important part of the choice-making process for me. Um, so, you know, I, I, you know, working with J.J. Abrams or John Favreau, I mean, they're just an E or Gore Verbinski or whoever. I mean, they're really easy choices for me because they're really inspirational and creative people, and I know that I'm going to spend a lot of time with them, and 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 hopefully together we'll, you know, we'll do great work. Um, and then, because the the turnover is a year and a half or two years. You know, there's a degree of happenstance as to when you land and you finish something and when it's going to start up again. But if you can kind of get in step with people like, um, you know, JJ or whoever, um, then, you know, hopefully you can continue that run if you, you, you know, if you want, obviously, if they want you to continue working with them or vice versa. But you do, you do have some control over, you know, I have some control over what I work with. I mean, the, you, you become friends with these people, you know, you, and so. And, and you have a working relationship with, with them. And if you look at, at actually, I think, some of the great directors working today, and, and visual effects is just one of the many departments, is more often than not, they kind of want to work with the same people. If you find people, I think most people who work in anything, once they find people that kind of have a sympathetic vision to, as to theirs, you know, they want to work with those people because it's, it's, a, it's a shorthand, you can really, um, um, the decision making process is easier you know you have the same sensibilities as they do that if you just left, left them alone they would go and do something and you probably come back and say that's pretty cool so um, I think you know the Spielbergs and the J.J. Abrams and John Favreau's and all of these people generally want to work with the same people once they found their guys you know they, they kind of like that, that that kind of that hub of that feeling of working with people that you really are in lockstep with well you, you, you know, I, I work on large projects. They tend to, you know, the visual effects team ends up being, you know, it's a huge number of people, hundreds of people that you, you know, you're, you're, you're going to be interacting with. And obviously, there's a there's a degree of hierarchical structure to it all, so that you tend to be interacting more often than not with with, you know, certain team leaders within that or supervisors within that. But at the same time, you know, that's one of the reasons I love doing what I do is actually, um, I almost work as an independent supervisor in that I do the whole show, but I get the opportunity to come back and work with the artists, and to me, that's really where your, you know, the rubber hits the road, or some other very cheesy analogy, is that the truth is, that's where the images are created, and if you have a vision for what it is you're trying to do, then the simplest way of communicating it is direct with, with, with the people that are actually trying to do it. And I think certainly where I am now is that I have such an incredible respect for the, the, the talent that all of the collaborat collaborators that, you know, come with the process, you know, that I work with and at my, at more at my level, you know, in my group, in the visual effects world. 
is that more often than not, if I can explain to them what it is that I'm trying to do you know, in a visual way, then they can figure out that, you know, the, the incredibly com complicated work that they have to do in the most efficient way of, of dealing with it. And so I, I try and draw that line and say that's, that's why we have these people, you know, the, the Michael DeComos at ILM and the Dan Pearsons and the Robert Weavers and the Martin Murphys, all of these guys are all just incredibly good at their job. And you can say to them, I want the alien wound to look X, Y, Z or whatever, or I want that ship to explode in a certain way, and they will go back and they'll figure out how to do that. But I think if you, if you start from a place of technology, it's kind of a weird, to me, it's the cart is driving the horse or some other, let me use another analogy, you know, it, it's sort of back to front. So I try and I just try and speak in terms of the image and then to be honest with you, of course, there's many, many occasions where the guys are saying to me, well, to do this, it would mean this or whatever. And that's fine too. You can just then, you know, I can, I can, I can talk some technology with them. Um, but, you know, their, their understanding of that sort of stuff is just far superior than, than mine, especially as they're doing it every day. Um, so I try and, in my head, keep this version of what I believe is the biggest picture I can, which is how our work is fitting into the movie and what it is visually that we're trying to, to, to do. Are we doing something that is that, that works for the movie and, and, and have some vision and, you know, the most efficient way of communicating that to them. And the more often than not, that's drawings, you know. I mean, in the presentation that I just did, um, I love just doing a little drawing and saying, this is sort of what I'm imagining it's going to be. Um, and so as I sit at my desk and I talk to people about the work, I, you know, my drawing skill is not particularly good, but I can, I can just go, so, you know, something like this, you know. And more often than not now, a lot of them kind of, um, they find it entertaining and there's, there's a lot of them have this ritual of taking the drawing away with them. And they, 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 I think there's a sort of, we, we think it's quite amusing amongst ourselves, but they end up with these stacks of drawings of these crazy things that I've done for them. But I think whatever it is, the tool that, you know, that I can communicate with them in that way, you know.